Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today, I'm going to show you how to calculate your average monthly expenses, even when you might have some other expenditures that might occur daily, weekly, annually. We'll show you a method to convert these into a monthly calculation to give you a good enough average so you kind of know, okay, these are my monthly expenses roughly. Because, you know, some things, if you pay them quarterly or annually, you got to do a little math, right? Now, this video does follow my expense tracker video that we did yesterday, and I'm going to be using the same database for that. So if you haven't watched this video, go watch this one first, then come on back. All right. So one of the things that happens when I build a database for myself to use in class is that as I'm using it and working with it with my own data, I always come across little things I want to add to it. So what I wanted to do was to add it so I can calculate an average monthly expenses based on all my different expenses. Now, if you look at what we got here, we got groceries, right? And of course, that number is way under what it should be, <laughs> right? But I got it for every two weeks. All right, you got electric, $400 a month, every one month, rent, month, right? Annual pass is yearly. So with a little math, we can figure out what these should be monthly. And it's, it's not terribly hard math, but it's just knowing how to do it. And you can come up with an average monthly expenses. And that's not perfect, but it, at least it lets you know what you need to make to survive every month, right? Okay, so let's see how we do this in Access. All right, first thing I'm going to do is download the database from the expense tracker. Now, if you're a gold member, go download it. If you're not, well, you can build that database by watching the video. It's right here. I'll put a link to it down below. I'm going to download this since I am a gold member on my own website. I would hope so, right? <laughs> All right, so I extracted the file. I put it here in my account balances folder. And our recurring transactions are right there. Okay, here's what we got. Let's make it so we can see everything. Okay. All right, just like the screenshot, right? Two weeks, one month, one month, one year. All right, so now we're going to go and edit the query and put some calculations in the query that's under this form. What query is it? Let's take a peek. That should be the recurring transactions queue, just what I thought it was. Okay, so we're going to close that. Find that query right there. We, we try to do our calculations in queries. All right, that's the best way to do it, design view. I don't like putting calculations directly in forms, aside from maybe the occasional sum or something. Now, if I look at this query, I've got an amount. I've got the frequency ID that represents either daily, monthly, annually, and so on. We've got a frequency quantity. In other words, how many of those terms are there? Two years, right? One year, that kind of thing. Okay, so knowing that information, if I knew how many days were in that period, right, then I could divide that cost up by the number of days and then multiply by the number of days in a month. Makes sense, right? If I'm, if I'm paying $100 a month for something, all right, let's pull up the good old calculator here, right, $100 a month. Let's assume there are 30 days in a month, all right, just assume, so divided by 30. All right, so my cost is $3.33 roughly per day, okay? So if it's an annual fee, right, if I'm paying $1,000 a year for something, I can divide by 365, that's my daily cost. Then I can once again multiply it by 30 to get my rough monthly cost, okay? So let's take a quick look at our frequency table. Let me close this down real quick. All right, in the frequency table, I added week, by the way, when I was going through working with my data. Yeah, you could do seven days, but I, yeah, I just I like one week better. And that's something that I kind of discovered as, as I was using it. So just add week and the date add code for it is WW, not just W. WW gives you the week. W by itself gives you the weekday. So it's a number from one to seven. So you want this to get actual weeks. But OK, looking at each one of these things, OK, what would I have to divide by to get days? Well, day by itself is just one, right? And week is easy because that's seven, right? Whatever number's in there, I can actually multiply it by seven to get that number, all right? Number of weeks. Year is roughly 365, right? We're going to use 365.25 to take leap years into consideration. And yeah, I know the number's longer than that, okay? And months, if you do the math and divide up all the months, the average number of days in a month over the course of a year is 30.42. Add all the days up, divide by 365, you get the answer. So what we need is a field in here to store that, the number of days in that period. Okay, so let's go back to our frequency table because we have to open up the back end, right? It's a split database. 
Here's my backend file. Let's design this. All right, we're gonna call this num days. We'll make it a number, and I'm gonna make it a double. All right, either we use long integer or double. We don't use the other types. They're for more advanced peoples, okay? All right, now we'll put the number of days in here. That's one. All right, month is 30.42. For a year, we'll go 365.25. Yeah, I know it's longer than that, but for the purposes of this, for any real realistic da database, that's it, fine. And then a seven for weeks. All right, now we know how many days are in each one of those periods. Okay, so now I can go to my recurring transaction query. And now I can add, where are you? Num days right there. Okay, so if I run this now, you'll see you get the num days for each of those periods in there. Monthly, monthly, annual, weekly. Okay. So the next step is to figure out your cost per day. We have the total cost, right? Where's your total cost? It's right here, the amount. All right. And we know what the number of days in that period are. So now we can figure out our cost per day. All right, so come over here, next column. I'm going to zoom in so you can see it better. All right, my cost per day is going to be the amount divided by the num of days divided by the frequency quantity because they might be, you know, it might be two months. So if it's two, if, if that's the cost per two months, then divide that by two to get your daily cost. All right, normally this is just one. Okay, now let's take a peek. See what we got. Open it up. Okay. There's your cost per day. Let's see if these make sense. Let's take a look. All right. $1,200 per month is $39 a day. All right. $1,200 divided by 30.42. Yep. Math, math, blah, blah, blah. math works out. Okay. $600 per year. $1.64. That seems about right. Okay. So now we have our cost per day. All right, now we're going to turn this into the cost per month, which is just multiplying it back by the number of days per month. So one more time, cost per month is going to be, we're going to round that cost per day times 30.42, which we already know is the number of days per month over the course of a year by average, comma zero decimal places because I don't worry about cents. Okay, hit okay. All right, looks good. Run it. Now, the monthly ones should just go back to their original number. All right, let's see. Where are you? Let's, uh, let's move this over to the edge so I can see it. Okay. Yeah, the monthly ones should just go back to that because you're dividing by 30.4 and you're multiplying by 30.4. But this guy, the annual one, right, 50. This guy, 261. All right, that was $120 every two weeks so divide that by 14 right 8.5 that's your cost per day and then to get the cost per month multiply it by 30.42 and there you go 260.7 so it rounded it off to 261 close enough so now we have the cost per month for each of our recurring transactions save that yes and now we can go into our recurring form where are you right there and put a total down the bottom here. Now, you don't have to have the field in here as long as it's in the underlying table or query. All right, so I'll just take, uh, I'll grab a new one here. Xbox, drop it down below, open it up, and we'll go all. What's the control source here? Well, we want our cost per month, right? But I wanna sum that up. So it's gonna be equals the sum of cost per month. If you've never done form footer totals before, go watch this video. It's a really good video. All right, and then we'll give it a good name. I like to call it sum cost per month. That's the name of the field itself. And then here, we'll put average monthly expenses. And make it a little bit bigger than that. So it doesn't fit. And make it so we can read it. There you go. Oh, no. All right, good enough. Save it, close it, close it, open it. Oh, wrong one. 
forgot we didn't put a button to it in the last video. Uh, right here. Boom, there you go. 1911. Let's add something else. Let's, let's add in here uh, uh, just XXX, whatever. Okay, let's say it's $100 a month. All right, boom, 2011. Let's add something in here that is $1 per day. All right, it went up 30 bucks a month. That's about right. Okay, how about something quarterly? Let's do $100 per every three months. All right, we're at 2041 now. We're at 2074, that seems about right. 30 bucks a quarter. Or 30 bucks a month, which would be $100 a quarter. Okay, see how that works? It's not hard. It's just a little bit of math. And again, I stress that this is a rough number just to give you an idea. Well, we got to make $2,074 this month, right? <laughs> that's, that's all that's for. I'm not trying to be like accounting exact here. And as we all know, some months are bad. And some, like they have 28 days and you still got to pay the same mortgage, right? <laughs> All right, so don't forget, this is another one of those features that I just added just this morning, in fact, to my account balances and recurring expenses template. I took all the lessons from the account balances stuff, the expenses, put them all together, and I'm, I'm adding new stuff. I added a whole bunch of stuff today, in fact. I'm going to put another video up on this page to explain all the new stuff that's in here. So as I make new stuff, I'll be sure to add it to this template. So check it out if you want to. Uh, yeah, check it out. <laughs> So that is gonna be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something, my friends. Live long and prosper. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the video's up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, wanna get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, 
I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the Tech Help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now, answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.